Now, also with uh, digital distribution starting to happen, you know, a lot of people are talking about, you know, Netflix has started talking about how they're going to let people download movies, and you know, we'll see what happens with that. I know, Michael, you cover Netflix and these guys. Um, do you think, though, is that is that a concern about what's going to happen, you know, digitally with people downloading games? And you know, PS3 has a 60 gig hard drive. Or do you think realistically, you know, people are going to be downloading games and not even getting a physical disc at all anymore? Well, they're, they're doing it now on a small basis right. with, with arcade-style games. I think the, the larger question is, is will, the, will and how soon would the market evolve towards doing more of the larger uh, frontless games? I don't think it'll happen in this generation, but right. it's potentially in the future. So I think that we're beginning baby steps that are beginning to uh, accelerate and bolster the, the digital download uh, approach. For everything, from I mean, movies to games, sure, you know, sure. it's already happened with music. I mean, how, how does that change you know, the idea of renting games down the road, Sean? Well, I think for us, A, I think it's a long ways off. Right. Um, um, and I think by then we will have built a, a nice size, a very large member base. Yeah. And we will have a direct one-to-one -one billing relationship. We sort of know what games they like, what preferences, what systems they own. So I think there'll be a lot of opportunity for us in the future if that becomes a viable business. All right. So, Michael, you think the rental business is that, you know, Net net, it's good for for gaming. I do. I you know I think that uh, something we only saw happen maybe in the last three or four years. If you read reviews of games, the reviewer will put in, "This is a rental." Right. You know, and <laughs> and it's either because it's a lousy game or because it's too short. Yeah. So I think what comes back to the publisher is, I better not make a ten-hour game because if I make a ten-hour game, it's worth renting for two weeks. Right. You know, for twelve bucks or for half of. But it. some people argue that they'd much rather have you know a great jam-packed ten-hour game that's just you know balls of the wall action, fantastic, as opposed to some you know lame thirty-hour game. Is it you know like you look at something like Gears of War, which is a shorter game, but you know, then the multiplayer is I think what adds on more time, sure. right? So you have a short single-player game, a longer multiplayer game. Do we necessarily want longer games then? I mean, is that good for you know, gamers? Well, like how many hours is Madden football? Right. You know, Madden football is a 15-minute game, yeah. except you have unlimited, you know, outcomes. Right. So you'll keep playing it again and again. That's all multiplayer really does yeah. to, to a Halo mm -hmm. is it changes all the outcomes. And so you'll play that game for hundreds and hundreds of hours. Yeah. So, you know, I think that that's where we're seeing game design evolve. It's the shorter game with lots and lots of features. What I think is interesting is whether the publishers are going to start building games short by design and then have downloadable levels. Yeah. We're seeing that with map packs, you yeah. know, so we're seeing how they mm -hmm. can expand the territory. Are they going to start adding the features over time and selling it to you right. as a hidden way of getting $100 per game? Yeah. You charge you 60 up front and then $40 And then you the might downloads. have to, you know, rent it a second or third time if you want to experience that new content. I mean, you guys right. are probably going to start seeing that too, right? Right. I think, I, th I think what also is interesting is that um, the movie business is such a broad-based business. Um, it's mass, and games is getting there. And I think the difference between a bad game a few years ago and a good game, a lot of people think, um, how do I say this? Um, what was a bad game a few years ago, everybody agreed upon. Yeah. What's a bad game today? There's a difference of opinion. Yeah. And so you got to give consumers options. Because yeah. what you may love, I may hate, and vice right. versa. And five, ten years ago, everybody agreed this was either a good game or this was a bad game. And yeah. I think as the base broadens, it allows for more people to come in. Yeah. And you know, there's a variety of taste and opinion. Do you find, like Michael mentioned, something like Madden Football, I would assume probably more people buy that game than, you know, or they rent it and then convert it to buy because there's so much depth to that, right? So, I mean, a Madden player, is, that's a game that you play all year versus something like, you know, a short single-player game that would be, you know, 15 hours, you, you play it, you're done with it, and you move on, right? Historically, sports games have not done well for rental because right. people want to play them for a whole season. Yeah. But that being said, we're still renting Madden 04. I mean, wow. you know, don't ask me why, but people are playing it. <laughs> Go back and say, well, that's the other great thing about you know <laughs> rent service too is you can go back sometimes you know through the history books and you know an old game that you can't even find on a store shelf or something you well, can you know yeah. sample it. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, you know, you 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 were talking about these multiple channels and, and how the movie industry has evolved. I mean, if you think back, you know, 25 years ago, pre VCRs, yeah. there was theatrical distribution and there was television. Yeah. That was the only two chances that the movie studios got to make money. And now you have theatrical, you have rental, yeah. you have DVD Self sales, right. video on demand, yeah. pay-per-view, premium cable, you know, HBO, yeah. and then you might even have TND in there, then free TV. And the so, iPod now. Yeah, there's like nine ways, I think, or eight or nine ways to collect money. And please believe me, the studios get paid on every single one of yeah. those things. So I think with downloads and with rental, we're, we're seeing that the studios are starting to get paid 
I'm sorry, the studios, the publishers are starting to get paid right. a piece of that stream. Like, yeah. And I think the publishers look at use and say, well, we'd like some of that too, because it is yeah. a substitute. Yeah. But we don't know what the business model is going to be for video games. What we do know is the publishers are spending more and they want to get more money. Yeah. And the consumers appear to be willing to pay more. You look at like Wii, you know, Virtual Console, you know, what's doing there, and then these old games from, you know, the 80s and 90s sure. that no one was going to go buy at retail, but people are buying them like crazy just yeah. to re-experience them, and that's more money for these publishers. Right. It's but really it's the first time that it's emerged, the model that you're referring to, where you can have a secondary life of an old right. game right. of any meaningful way. So it, it's, yeah, it's certainly encouraging. Bring back those Sierra Classics. We, we've thought about it. You know, it's not so different than GameTap, which yeah. we've also brought back Sierra Classics with. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's, there are more markets uh, emerging. And when we come back, we're going to talk all about the idea of microtransactions. Michael mentioned map packs. Well, they're out there. What should you pay for them? Coming up next in the bonus round. Next time, the bonus round tackles a major issue, microtransactions. What content should publishers charge for and what should they make available for free? The expectation is it be something meaningful, an right. addition that extends the experience. And how far will publishers take the concept? Could we be charged for every bullet we want to fire in Halo 3? I think the publishers are going to greenlight projects with a budget that requires a return and they're going to price the game, including all microtransactions, accordingly. The debate continues next Saturday in the bonus round. Bonus round.